beautiful people, thank you so much for tuning in. Today we are trying out an electronic wind instrument. Now, if you visited my channel before, I have actually played what I called an electronic tin whistle before, called the warble. Now, the warble is actually a MIDI controller, so what this means is it doesn't make any sound itself, but you plug it into something like an app that does make sounds that supports MIDI, and it works as a sort of a remote control for you playing the notes, but the finger patterns that you play on it are just like tin whistle. This, on the other hand, is a little bit different. It is called a MIDI UE or EWI, um, but it's a wind instrument itself. So you blow into it and it actually makes its own sound. It doesn't need to be plugged into an external app. So it's a little bit different and it is really fun to play. So I'm going to get this out to show you and take you through how to play it, how it sounds and exactly how it works. Before I open this, I just want to say that this was sent to me by Van Goa. Their website is vangoa.com and this will be available on their website and on their Amazon at the end of the month. I will put a link in the video description when this is out. This is actually a preview video. It's not available just yet, but it will be at the end of May, so stay tuned. If we open the box, you can see that it is nicely packaged. It has some foam on the top for protection. We have a little booklet here which tells you uh, everything about this instrument. It's actually classed as a MIDI saxophone, and that is because you can use saxophone fingering on this instrument, but you can also use a second option called flute fingering, which is much more similar to tin whistle. I will be showing you both of those today. But this little booklet tells you how to use all the features and how to play all the notes on this instrument. We have a little sort of velvet pouch, so you can keep your instrument safe and you can take it with you on outings if, you, if you're going to play it somewhere. We have a silicone mouthpiece and there are two of these. We have two cables here, one for charging and one you can actually use to plug this in. It's um, like an audio jack cable so you can use to plug this into external speakers and other audio if you need a volume boost. And finally, the instrument itself. Now the instrument itself is shaped like other wind instruments at the top. You have a plastic mouthpiece which is moulded as part of the instrument right here. And you can see there are some holes here and you actually blow into this mouthpiece. It comes with two silicone tips and that is to protect the mouthpiece here. So you need to slide these on and push into place, just like this. As we go down the body, you can see the branding at the top here. This is the built-in speaker box, so the sound from the instrument will come from this electronic speaker. As we move down, you'll see we have a set of three finger pads here, where you place your first, second and third fingers on the left hand. Then we have two smaller finger pads here, which I tend to use with my little finger. As we go down, we've got another set of three for the right or left hand, depending on which way you prefer and two smaller ones below. Now standard right hand fingering is the left hand on the top, the right hand on the bottom, which gives you easy access to these additional smaller finger pads. But if you were to switch it up for left-handed players and put your right hand at the top and your left hand at the bottom, you can still reach these finger pads with relative ease. So it's not a problem, you can play it either way. At the bottom of the instrument, you'll also see another little hole here. This does drip a little bit as you play. Obviously, you're putting hot air into a piece of plastic and the moisture needs to come out from somewhere. So you will notice the instrument drips a little from this bottom hole the more you play. Now, on the back of this instrument, we have a little screen at the top and a selection of buttons. These control all the different settings that you can apply to this instrument. You'll also notice two additional finger pads. These change the octave in which you're playing. So if you put your thumb on the bottom finger pad, you're playing in the lowest octave. If you cover no finger pads, you're playing in a middle octave. And if you cover the top one, you're playing in a high octave. You'll also notice that we have the headphone jack right here. Again, you can use this part to plug into an external speaker if required. And we have this little USB port here for charging your electronic wind instrument. So before I get into how to play this, the fingering and everything that you need to know with regard to setting up this instrument, I just want to give you a quick idea of how it sounds. I'm going to press the power on button at the back and hold for a few seconds. Bluetooth mode. It'll tell me we're in Bluetooth mode and you'll see that we have a zero one up here. So this from the basics is how it sounds. <laughs> So 
So let's go through some settings on this before we get into the playability of the instrument. If you look at the back here, you can see we have a selection of different settings. And in order to change these, you simply press and hold the option that you want, and then you use the plus and minus buttons at the top to add or subtract that particular effect or to cycle through the different effects available. So firstly, we have the tone option. If I press tone, you can notice that we have the option to scroll from one through 10. And this gives you 10 different sound settings for the instrument. So I'll give you a quick scroll through of each one so you can hear how they sound. The second option available is the volume button. So if we press the volume button, you can see that the volume will go all the way up to 12 from one. One being quiet, 12 being high. So I'll give you an example of one, six and 12 volume. We have the option to control the breath requirements. So you can have this as one, two, or three. One being you don't really need to blow very hard, two being a medium sort of breath requirement, and three giving you the option to blow really strongly into the instrument. We also have the option to change the amount of reverb. So this goes up to 30 and cycles back down through one. Zero being no reverb, 10, 15 being a mid-range, and 30 being high levels of reverb. If you don't like any of the settings or you want to put everything back to how it was, there's a little reset button at the bottom here and pressing and holding that will reset everything back to its original factory settings. There are two other options on this instrument. We have finger and transpose. Now fingering switches between saxophone fingering and flute fingering. And I'm going to go through the notes now and show you what the notes are and how the fingering works on the saxophone setting. Now there is information in the booklet about the official um, 
way to use this instrument in the saxophone setting, but I have found a really easy way, especially for me as a tin whistle player, to remember how to find all the notes in the saxophone setting. So I'm going to show you that. At the moment, the instrument is in the key of D. So if I cover three holes at the top and three holes at the bottom, this instrument will play a D. Now the scale itself isn't D diatonic as on a tin whistle. So it doesn't play D, E, F sharp. It plays D, E, F. So in order to get the F sharp or the sharps and flats, you can actually use these little holes here. The easiest way to do this is on the left hand. Putting your finger on the top hole on the left hand will make the note sharper. Putting your finger on the bottom hole on the left hand will make the note flatter. So for example, here we have a D. If I put my little finger on the top hole, we'd have a D sharp. If I put my little finger on the bottom hole, we'd have a D flat. So I'm going to take you through a scale from the bottom right the way up through all the chromatic notes I've found on this instrument and pay close attention to the finger holes. I'll try and add some sort of tab on screen as well, but I've had to create this myself, so I've no idea how it's going to look right now while I'm filming. <laughs> Forgetting the pads at the back, change the octave so we have lower octave, middle octave, higher octave, like this. We also have a transpose button here, which you can use to change the key of the instrument. You can transpose up and down to your heart's content and play in any key that you need to. Just remember that by using the transpose button, when you then play six fingers down, you'll have a different starting note than you would when you first start out in the key of D. One final thing I wanted to show you was the fingering for the flute setting. Now, if I press on finger, and press the plus button, I get to setting two, that is the flute setting. And this is the most similar to tin whistle. Now, in order to use this like a tin whistle, we do have to play around a little. If we press the finger button, press the plus button and go to option two, that is the flute fingering setting. And it kind of works like a tin whistle, we just need to fiddle around a bit to get the C sharp. So at the moment, I have the instrument set to play D when I put six holes down, like this. <laughs> So on this scale, we've got D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, and then if we've got all fingers off or even two fingers down, we play C, natural. So in order to get the C sharp, we need to use this little finger hole here, and that gives us the sharpened C. So to play like a tin whistle, we'd play pretty much six holes down, Now, one of the other things I've noticed is that you can actually utilize dynamics on this instrument. So although you can't slide on and off notes for sliding ornaments, you can play rolls and cuts somewhat because removing any finger even slightly will register on this instrument. So as an example,
and the finger that you lift does change the intonation somewhat, it changes the note slightly, so it does have a different sound. So you can play around a lot with the sound quality and the interesting little flourishes you can make with this instrument. One other thing I absolutely love is the fact that you can actually use your breath to make it louder or quieter. So you can fade notes off, you can give notes more power as you like. And the higher the breath control settings, um, the more sensitive or the more dynamics it allows you to have. I've got it on the lowest setting at the moment, so I don't really need a lot of breath to put into this, but still I can manage to give notes more and less strength. I'll give you an example. this instrument recognizes the amount of breath that you put in, you can also include your own vibrato in this as well. So you can play straight notes or vibrated notes using your breath. Now for me the most difficult thing to get used to is using the additional finger pads but also using the um, octave change pads at the back. It takes, yeah, some getting used to to add the thumb holes into that. But if you play other instruments, like you play recorder, you're probably already used to this, so you would pick up playing this instrument really quickly. Now, one of the major uh, incredible features about this, obviously, is that you can play it at any time of day or night because you can play it completely silently. You can practice right next to somebody on a plane, in the office, watching TV, wherever you are. You can change the volume on this so you can make yourself heard or you can play really quietly. It gives you the option to practice literally anywhere at any time, which I think is a absolutely incredible feature. Um, I love the fact that you can use dynamics with this. I love the fact that it picks up uh, the ornaments and things that you play. It's really lightweight. It's easy to use. The only downside for me is obviously having to learn some different fingerings in order to be able to play this, but that's the same thing with any instrument. If I was to get a different wind instrument, it would have different fingerings, so it would take a little bit of time to get used to. As I mentioned, there is the option to use the saxophone style fingering, which there is information about in the booklet. It doesn't really take all that long to charge, and it seems to have lasted quite a while with me practicing and playing here on the video, um, so yeah. I can definitely recommend it. If you are interested to find out more about this instrument, which actually folks is pretty affordable, you'll find out more information on the website link in the description down below and on the Amazon link at the end of the month when I'm able to put that in the description as well. If you have any questions about this instrument that I haven't answered, please do leave them in the comments below this video. I'll try and find out that information for you or Van Gogh might actually respond to your messages directly and give you all the information they can on this instrument so that you can learn how to play it and uh, make the most out of it. I hope you loved this review and I hope you loved this really cool electronic wind instrument. If you did, please do hit that big thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notifications every time new reviews and tin whistle tutorials come out right here on my channel. Don't forget to check out some of the other interesting instruments that I've played that aren't tin whistle. But until later in the week when I have a beautiful tin whistle tutorial, have a great time, happy whistling, and I'll see you folks again soon. Bye.